This video will offend a lot of blacks and African people, but truly, if you listen, you might be able to learn something. Unfortunately, the black and African community has been domesticated like a wolf to a dog. I have my notes here. We're going to explain today on how a civilization of people that went from kings and queens don't even know which gender they are. Guys, there's about 300,000 wolves on this planet Earth, and there's about 90 million dogs. It's an unfortunate circumstance, but this is what happens when you are bred to be a pet, a caged animal that doesn't even know that it's caged. It's a very unfortunate life. Before we get into how the kings and queens have turned into this, we need to understand how a wolf became a dog. Like I said, I have my notes, so let's begin. Let's learn about the wolf. First, a ferocious creature, a beast, some would call it. It is now a household pet, which is called a dog. But how did it get that way? This came from years of enslavement. These animals were bred to be what the world wanted them to be. And they fell short of themselves, not even knowing how to truly survive in the wild. Domestication is a very sick word but through enslavement, uh, a domesticated creature is tamed for companion. That's literally the definition of domesticated. You're tamed for companion. And I'd say a lot of blacks and Africans are tamed for companionship themselves. So soft-spoken, so weak, so clueless and so confused, so corrupt and so unfortunate. The dog is the world's favorite animal not because it knows and it and it knows how to uh naturally be itself it's the world's favorite animal because it accommodates for what the owner would like it to be it's a mere creature that doesn't even know itself when it looks at itself the dog might see a wolf and just be so confused it's, it's truly unfortunate guys so let's go ahead and get to what's going on in this world with blacks and African people. The personality of a lot of these people is dull and useless to the world. And I've been around the world, as you guys know, I'm black American myself currently in South Africa. And I've been around the world. Uh, a lot of blacks and Africans have been crossbred into lighter breeds. Political stance, corrupt and foolish. I'm not talking about any country in specific, just saying in general. The morals are in the gutter. There's no code when it comes to the common black or African person. Even at some point, we had gangs that had more morals and codes than these guys that you see nowadays. They don't even have a code of conduct. They don't even know what they're fighting for. Legacy is in constant error. And what I notice with a lot of blacks and African people is they have no true goal except to make money. But for why are you trying to make it? Is it so that you can get a woman? Is it so that you can, you know, look good for your friends? Or is it so that you can build something that's outside of yourself? Truly, having blacks and Africans understand legacy is so difficult for a guy like myself that's truly a wolf. Because it's incompatible with a dog's software and, and hardware. Imagine you have a computer and you're trying to upgrade it. It's impossible because the computer can only go so far. The computer is only willing to let so much in. You can't put certain upgrades on certain computers. Same as a lot of these blacks and Africans. Now let's go to the beginning of black and African society. And this is something that a lot of blacks and Africans don't know. But Egypt stood longer than America. America is a civilization that's been around for, and it's been a country for about, is it 200, 300 years? I actually didn't write this in my notes, but I know I'm pretty accurate about that. America has been an actual country for about 200 to maybe 300 years, something like that. Egypt's been around for 3,000 years. Kings and queens, they, they've had dynasties last for, for thousands of years. 
And a lot of blacks and Africans don't even know that the first university was also in Egypt as well. You talk to Africans and black people now, and it's really unfortunate with Africans because they're so close to Egypt in comparison to a black person like myself, I shouldn't even have all this knowledge, but they don't even know about Egyptology. Most Africans, they only know about Christianity. So, uh, let's go ahead and make sure this is straight like that. Um, excuse me for that, guys. I have someone behind the camera that has never really recorded anything, so I'm trying to put folks up on game. But if you don't get distracted easily and if you're still tuned into the message, let's continue. We're living in a world where a lot of blacks and Africans don't even know their history. They don't truly know themselves. This is why you see a lot of people putting straight hair into their head, a lot of people coloring their hair blonde. This is an identity crisis similar to a dog that once was a wolf. I have a few things to ask you people. Curious what your answers are, leave them in the comment section below. Where is your God when you became domesticated? Where was your Jesus when you were being tortured for all the years of being tortured? It seems like other races understand that in life you have to put action first, but blacks and Africans rarely understand this. How do you not know your gender? It's in your pants. How can you argue with your man when that man is your army? How can you have a child and let the government take your child and not care for your legacy? How are you a man with no skills, no build, no legacy, only fake Gucci? You might like to play a lot of video games and you smoke weed on the daily. How can you consider yourself a man? How can you people sit when there is so much work that needs to be done? Unfortunately, there's still so much work that needs to be done for us blacks and Africans. And I'm realizing in today's society that unfortunately, we're dealing with a race of people that don't truly know themselves. And the issue with building with people like this is that, um, the issue with uh, building with people like this is that they're not able to build because their mindsets are so different. If you really wanna build a civilization or if you really wanna have a healthy society for blacks and Africans ever, you would need people that are like-minded and a dog's mind is so different from a wolf's mind. A wolf actually has a pack. They're pack animals. They stay together through thick and thin like the Muslims, like other races of people do. Blacks and Africans, one wrong move, it, it, everything's done. They don't want to be friends no more. They don't want to be family no more. They don't want to take care of their kids no more. One wrong move with the black and African society and everything goes to shits. People so confused, we can't even get over simple debates. Look at you people in the comments right now already hating thinking of so much hatred instead of thinking about building, so mind and it's backwards that you don't even know how to really listen to something, hear it, interpret it, and do something with it. How do we form a union so that we can progress our people in the most, in the most healthiest way possible? How do we do that when we're dealing with lots of dogs and not a lot of wolves? Well, unfortunately, we must segregate ourselves and separate ourselves from those that truly don't want to see this mission win. You cannot expect too much of a dog for it is trying to please its master. A lot of you guys are trying to please your master, which is the man. For us wolves that are out here, we don't please a master, we don't serve a master, we're not enslaved. And that's why there's so few of us, because the world tries to get rid of us. When I was younger, I thought I was doing a lot of things wrong. I wanted to be a rapper. I wanted to color my hair and I wanted to wear skinny jeans. And I told myself, I said, this isn't me. 
How far do I have to go so that I can become somebody in this world that wants me to be a nobody? What does it take? It takes everything. You don't get things in life easy when you're a wolf. Dogs get free meals. Dogs sometimes get free clothing. They get insurance, doggy insurance. They got doggy hotels. Everybody wants to pet the dog, but when you're a wolf, unfortunately, a lot of times in this world, you're a lone wolf. So what's the most important thing for blacks and Africans right now? You find your pack, you stick to it. You stop trying to be around so many dogs. Unfortunately, we may have to do business with them, but we must understand that they are not of us. A lot of times they'll even try to off us because they do not love us. I also applaud cats because a lot of people think cats are fully domesticated, but cats actually truly don't like you. It's actually funny how much humans think that cats are pets. Cats, you can't turn a cat into a domesticated animal because cats are not weak in spirit. They're not weak in soul. They don't just give up that easily. To be a dog and to fully rely on your owners to provide you with food, shelter, electricity, so many things and us as black people don't even have our own. It's actually quite ridiculous. As a wolf, we need to be out here getting on our own and a lot of people will consider our journey crazy, but I'd say that our mission will be successful. A lot of people do not understand currently in today's climate, they're so self-reliant on their government that they could never survive alone. I had a wise person once tell me this, that what would you do if the government cut off all the food supply, if they took away you know, your right to just be a human, what would you do? What would you do if they turn off your power and they you know, made these laws to entrap you and to give you a horrible existence? What would you do? How would you fight? A lot of you have no answer. So to conclude, a lot of people, you're a wolf in a society where dogs are getting all the love, dogs get all the attention, dogs don't get hated. They're pets, they're weaker animals, remember this. Consider the fact that it is amazing to be a wolf and there's no shame in being a wolf. You hear stories about wolves hiding in sheep's clothing but I am not one of them. I will not hide in the sheep's clothing for I am not scared or I'm not in fear to be a wolf. I'm happy to be a wolf. And I'm extremely happy to not be a dog. A domesticated creature that doesn't even know itself. If you guys have uh, learned something from this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Also go ahead and check out the Patreon as well. Small speech. You know, we can do some more of these if you guys like, but you know, just had to let you guys know. So. The journey continues, brothers and sisters, uh, for the real wolves that understand. Put it down in the comments. Let's network, of course. So important for us pack animals to do so as we see other pack animals do. Um, yeah, let's get to this work, man. The journey continues. The ancestors, just because we seem like we have a bit of freedom doesn't mean we are truly free. Let's continue the journey. Travel, tribe raw. Stay raw, stay real. We gone. Holla. We about to do an interesting pop the balloon challenge, all right? The question of today is, can men and women be friends? If you don't believe men and women can be friends, then pop your balloon. Three, two, one. Oh, okay. Call up one friend that you have that is male. Hi, Tony. How are you? What is it that an African man has to do to keep you over a white man? How would you control a woman, per se? Manipulation. Manipulation? Yeah. So you would manipulate women? Yeah, I would. So if you was a man for one day, you would manipulate women. Hey, hey you're the... What else besides money do y'all value in 2024? Why do y'all ladies deserve to go on dates? Get you some money, then travel for...